Hey guys, it's Stephen here. Welcome back to another episode of the Transfer Target powered by Snickers Protein, who are helping fans fall back in love with the game during this transfer window. I hope you're all well today. Welcome back to another video. Today, as ever, I'm going to go through some of your fan line questions and then go through the big news from the world of Manchester City in terms of transfers. Now, if you don't know about the fan line so far, all you got to do is tweet at me, at Stephen McInerney, and I'll be answering your questions from the Snickers Protein fan line as long as you include the hashtag fan line. And I've got three more to go through today. Don't forget, by the way, if you do send me a tweet, you do consent for your name and comment being used in these videos. It's all pretty awesome, though. And also, you can send a video in as well if you want to. If you don't want to send it via Twitter in terms of... Um actual tweets you can dm it as well by the way if you want to but i will be using videos as well uh if you want to send that in get you get your face on this screen which would be absolutely wonderful wouldn't it right we got a few questions today from a few people let's go through some of the questions and then i'll get on to some of the transfer news and his lows today i'm going to start initially uh with this one from josh the float bro it says apparently jose gaia wants to leave valencia and he could be a pretty cheap um and he could be pretty cheap do you think he'd be a good option for us um Yes, to be honest, mate, he seems like a good footballer. I'll be honest, I've not watched loads of him, but what I can tell, he seems a pretty complete modern fullback. So what would we, what more could we want from that? I mean, I'm pretty certain as well. As well, his age range is pretty decent. He's let's have a look. Uh, Joe. Just making sure he's what I think he is in terms of age. Yeah, 25 years old, which is a good age. Obviously, he's got loads of experience at a high level, playing the Champions League, absolutely loads. Gaia, if he wanted to leave... um. Apparently Barcelona want him, but they were told to only sell out like 15 to 20 million. Maybe it could be a very similar situation to Ferran Torres where he's really cheap because Valencia haven't got much money. Uh, so I would take him. Yeah, definitely would take him. He seems a really good footballer uh, that would definitely approve Manchester City Football Club. So that's an option, mate. Um, the Flow Bros, Josh, I'll be all over that uh, potentially personally. Thank you very much for the question, pal. On to the next question. This comes from the Citizen Blues. Uh, it says, Fanline, should Douglas Louise be one of our main targets in the summer? Replace Fernandinho and use our buyback option. He's been brilliant for Villa and Brazil. Um, yeah, in a simple nutshell. I mean, if you want to... Well, I guess it's dependent whether we want to um, free up some money for a big name forward. For example, if you wanted to sign someone like Haaland or Messi, I think it's fair to say we're going to have to make some compromises into, in terms of what we're going to spend and stuff in certain positions. Uh, and Douglas Luiz, for me, and I personally think Rodri's getting better and better and better, Douglas Luiz would offer a very different alter take on that role than Rodri's. A little bit more dynamic, I would say. Obviously, Manchester City are very aware of his profile and what he can do, given the fact that City wanted him at one point to be back in the squad. Obviously, the fact that City signed him. So it's very much the case of better the devil, you know, and all that. So we do know he's good. We do know his style of play. And we do know he's impressed in the Premier League. And we do know he could get even better and better and better. So I would take him as a, a good, cheap -ish option for Manchester City. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, there's very little risk there. Obviously, we don't know if we can reach Fernandinho's level. But what I will say is that he's a good footballer who's proved himself very useful in the Premier League. At a lesser team than Manchester City, of all due respect to Aston Villa. So, Douglas Luiz, for me, if he wanted to come back and Manchester City wanted him, I would not complain in the slightest, mate. So, that's a, a, a very good option for Manchester City. Thank you very much for the question. And the last one for today comes from Fumbar Norway, with second appearance on the show. Hey, Stephen. The ball striker talk struck Haaland and Mbappe. I want to mention Luka Jovic. I remember watching him at Frankfurt and being reminded exactly of Aguero. Bill finishing, for example. I think he could be big. Thoughts? Um, yes, to be honest, I think he's doing really well back on... Um, where's he gone back on loan? He's gone back to Frankfurt, hasn't he? I'm pretty, I'm pretty certain he's back on loan at Frankfurt right now. He scored a wonderful goal the other day. I was watching him. Yeah, he's on loan there again. Uh, he's got three goals in three games there. And he seems like a really good footballer. Uh, and fair play to him, man. Like, I do I do rate him, actually. I think I said as well in the summer. And you probably find a tweet from me. Let me see if I can find it now. I'm pretty certain in the summer I was like, uh, Jovic would not be a bad bet if we could get him. Did I say it? Uh, something like that I did. Um... I can't remember the video. I can't find it. Uh, oh, I, I tweeted too much. But anyway, I'm pretty certain I did say something like that. And I stand by it. I would take Jovic at Manchester City. The problem he's got, if he does well at uh, Frankfurt, um, M Madrid will just keep him. I'm pretty certain Madrid probably won't be staring down a, a future with Zidane next season because he's been so poor. That I wouldn't be surprised if the next manager wanted a closer look. I think he had a bad time at um, Madrid, but he's a much better player than we realised. I really liked him the other day. I saw a compilation go on Twitter. I know it's only comp, but I loved how involved he was and his general link-up play was excellent and his finish was with his weaker foot too. He's a very good player. Um, lots of very good players sometimes struggle to settle in and be brilliant in Madrid because it's such a difficult club to be at. But that doesn't mean they aren't fantastically talented. Um, so yes, I would definitely take him. I would definitely take him if it was an option every now and then. Um, but I still think I'd rather Haaland. I would still obviously rather Haaland. But I think he's, um, he's an interesting player. And if it came to the City getting him, I'd be like... 
Pretty decent. I would take it. Anyway, guys, that's all the questions on the fan line today. You've only got a couple more days, by the way, until the fan line comes to an end as the transfer window slams shut. So if you want your questions in, use the hashtag fan line at Stephen McInerney. Don't forget you can send to your name and your comment and all that usual stuff. And don't forget as well, we'll be live on Ball Street on deadline day from 7 to 11 uh, p.m. And I'll be involved in that. I can't wait. There's a link in the description. I'll see you over there. On to the next three minutes. There's quite a few little bits of stories today. Um, Alaba... Um, AS in Spain was suggesting that City offered like 14 million euros. But on contrary to that, um, a well-connected local journalist, Simon Bukowski from the Manchester Evening News, said City aren't interested in Simon, signing David Alaba. Now, Simon is obviously a local journalist and will have some connections to the club. It's, it's possible, obviously, that one person is told him that and things can change, of course. But it, it seems quite a, a strong thing for Simon to come out and say that. And I've got no doubt that he that would be relatively well-sourced. Having said that... Um, you know, things can change very quickly. It could be that City have considered him. It could be that City have considered him until very recently then changed their mind. I don't know. What I do know is that Alaba is 29 years old now, a very good player, a fantastic footballer who would be very useful for Manchester City, but will cost an arm and a leg. And I think largely he probably wants to go to Real Madrid or something like that. I don't think he's interested in the Premier League for whatever reason, but we'll see, I guess, because his options are getting smaller and smaller because... You know, uh, some of the big clubs, the traditionally big clubs, they're not what they used to be. You know, your bosses, your rails and all that kind of stuff. But either way, that'd be interesting. But I don't really see it happening personally. There's a bit of new news around Howard Bellis as well. Now, Sam Lee uh, said that there's been several offers for Howard Bellis, but... Uh, after discussions between the academy and first team staff and obviously the player as well they've decided to reject that for now just to try and get through the, uh, the end of the season in case they need him as a backup player uh, which I guess is a compliment to him but also maybe if he wanted to play some football potentially a little bit frustrating but also he might just be happy to be involved now obviously I guess if the reason they're going to keep him around if they do is because they feel like um, injuries could pile up at any moment given this kind of tempestuous season given the unprecedented nature of the amount of games they're playing in such a compact period period of time don't forget the season did start later and it's going to finish at the same time so injuries have been picking up for a reason and of course we're living in a covid world unfortunately which means outbreaks could happen at any moment and players could end up not being involved and we could need howard bellis and i suspect the case is very similar for tommy doyle now i reckon if the world's hopefully any more normal towards the start of next season I wouldn't be surprised if Howard Bellis and people like Doyle got on loan then. I don't want to see Doyle particularly go on loan or want him around the first team, but I would not be surprised if that's the situation. Um, Howard Bellis is probably ready for a loan, but right now, if, if Guardiola wants him around the first team as backup, he probably isn't too upset about that because it's, it's, a, it's a compliment, put it that way. Um, Jekko, um update on that. Uh, some really interesting stories today. This was via Sport Witness. Apparently, Jekko's agent was like, City, you're all right. What about, all right, if you get Jekko and Gabriel Jesus goes to Roma, which apparently City were like, you're all right, pal, which is unbelievably audacious. I mean, to me, obviously, people are a little bit down on Gabriel Jesus, but that would be an incredibly stupid move. Dzeko uh, is obviously like 34 years old or something like that, getting on a little bit, and Gabriel Jesus is a young uh, player with lots more potential uh, right now. I know you, some people will say he's out of form and all that kind of stuff, but we would be a little bit naive to think that Dzeko would come in and be useful in the same way. Um... That would be a silly move, a very silly move for me. As much, regardless of what you think of Gabriel Jesus, uh, the goal records aren't that different. And also, Jekyll's older on his way down his career. Um, yeah, that would be a very silly thing. But City apparently have turned down the chance of signing Jekyll anyway. Unfortunately, also that that dream is over. Uh, that's Jack Gorn, by the way, from the Mail, who's got once again a local journalist with connections at the club. And apparently, City have turned down a chance to resign him. So I think it very much was a, a case where Jekyll's agent was like, "Oh, I'll take him. It'd be great." And City were like, "No, we love you, mate, but we don't really need you right now, unfortunately." And finally, uh, <laughs> um, Keiki and Matinho. I'm hoping it's pronounced Keiki. It's adorable. Um, I'm definitely definitely pronouncing him Keiki and no I had literally never heard of him until today and I'd be lying if I said the word someone tweeted me saying Stephen do you reckon this they could uh, what do you think of the rumours that one could stay at Man City and one could go on loan and I, all I could reply is like mate I don't even know if they're real people yet they could be football manager regens and I wouldn't have a clue but anyway I've done a little bit of research on them the reason I think this is actually interesting by the way is because it's probably literally true uh, well it is true the Fluminense president, uh, Mario Bittencourt, apparently told uh, Global Sport over in Brazil, City informed us that they'll make an official bid for these two players. So uh, a, a Fluminense big, big boy, basically, <laughs> big boy. 
the fuck around about? Um, it's a bit. Of... <laughs> anyway, he said that apparently City are interested in him. They're going to bid, so that's, that's funny. Um, but yeah, so it's going to happen apparently. Um, and loads of reports today that City uh, are going to pick the likes of Liverpool and Shakhtar. And Shakhtar knew a thing or two about a young attacking, uh, attacking Brazilian player. So I'll take their word on this. Um, and apparently City are going to tip them to it, including Liverpool as well. Uh, it'd be around offers of 10 million for both of them. And we'd get Keiki, a Man City. Keiki, I don't think it's pronounced that way, but I'm going to call him Keiki. And Matinho would go to one of the clubs. Uh, uh, Johnny Smithy, um, Jonathan Smith uh, and Bruno Andrade did a piece over on Goal.com as well, saying City are close to confirming deals for these. Now, apparently Keiki... Uh, <laughs> which I'd never get bored in saying that out loud, um, is a winger or attacking midfield and has been compared to Brazilian superstar uh, Neymar. Thank you for Goal.com for this information, by the way. He's not even played for Fluminense's first team yet, but is a U team regular for Brazil. Whereas Matinho has drawn comparisons with Paul Pogba. Um, actually, uh, part Congolese, which is interesting. He's already trained with the Brazilian national team, which is very interesting as well. So both highly rated and both allegedly close to joining Manchester City Football Club, which is interesting. You know, I don't know much about them, of course, I can't pretend to be an expert on Brazilian youth team football. <laughs> you might be. I personally not. I, I know a fair bit about football, but I, I would say that's where my knowledge stops. Uh, maybe you know about it because of football manager or something like that, but I am not an expert. Though, though to be fair, Matinho was involved in the Guardian's next generation, 60 best young talents in world football. Uh, so, yeah, that's interesting. Um, he got the nickname, by the way, Pogbenia of his resemblance in playing style. Apparently, uh, what are you laughing at? I just wonder if you're saying Katie or Katie. I'm saying Katie. Yeah, yeah. I accidentally, I don't show you her because she was playing Valhalla, but I accidentally said, I accidentally, I wouldn't say big bod, like big man, I'd accidentally called the Fluminese, Fluminese uh, chairman, a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need Nicola would appreciate that. Uh, either way, so that's an interesting bit of rumours there. I mean, Katie and Martinho, they sound like, um, do you remember Sharky and George? Sharky, Katie and Martinho. Uh, you probably don't remember Sharky and George because you're too young watching this. There'll be a few of you who do. Great show, by the way. Anyway, interesting rumours there and a very jam-packed episode of the Transfer Target. Powered by Snickers Pro Team. Big love to everyone who sent in the questions. Really, really appreciate it. Don't forget you've got a couple of days left until the fan line slams shut, unfortunately. Use the hashtag fan line, tweet at Stephen McInerney. Let's get chatting about some football stuff and I'll see you uh, tomorrow for a watch long. And of course, there's a match preview up which will be right on screen right now covering various parts of my body on the end card and all that kind of stuff click the subscribe button get me close to 50k have a wonderful evening go and just play games have fun dance just, just do whatever you want on a friday night relax obviously do it all sensibly have a wonderful day thank you to all the patrons bye